Praetorian Guard, the armoured columns that are closest to Saddam Hussein. In the desert, ground forces are still waiting to go into action and they're not underestimating the strength of the enemy. It's thought the Allied air offensive has done little to knock out the minefields and trenches sheltering Iraq's tanks and troops. But the major fear is still the threat of chemical weapons. With an Iraqi Scud missile intercepted overhead, British troops in the Saudi desert were alerted to an increased threat of chemical warfare. And today, added to the respirators and the protective clothing precautions, nerve agent pretreatment tablets. This is the first time that British soldiers have been instructed to take these by their military commanders. They have been taken in test conditions, they have been tried and proven. However, as I say, it's the, it's the first time they've been taken on a mass basis in the field. You've had a couple now. Are you all right? Yeah, fine, no problems at all. <laughs> the mere threat of a so-called dirty war with chemical, biological or nerve agents being used is calculated as an effective weapon in itself. It is countered by good training and equipment and a large supply of squaddies good humour. Number 5 Gun Detachment, O Battery 2nd Field Regiment. Mancunians all with the odd stray Liverpudlian. Mates at home and very much reliant on each other in the close world inside a Royal Artillery M109 gun. It's a family engaged on serious business. The men that we've got here are basically youngsters. We've got a lot of young men here. However, they're all keen, willing, willing to learn. And actually we now want to get up north and do the job that we've sent out here to do. You say youngsters, I mean, is that an advantage? It is for me, they do all the running for us. Start sharp, start sharp makes a good mother. So the gun detachment family learns to dig in, to protect themselves in the sand, and wait to take on the Iraqis. So far there have been no reports of clashes between Allied and Iraqi troops. The United States Marines are where they like to be, out in front and alone. An elite unit on a classified mission. 50 miles north of the massing American forces within clear view of Iraqi forces in Kuwait. They've been calling in fire support from the air and from the sea. Spotter planes lay down white phosphorus near Iraqi tanks and artillery to guide in the Harrier jump jets. An A-10 tank killer circles lazily. It does not strike. But after many airstrikes, much naval gunfire, the Iraqis are proving difficult to displace. A harbinger, perhaps, of things to come. The Marines are getting shelled day and night, 70 rounds in the last 24 hours. Uh, the artillery has been about uh, 4 kilometers to 15 to 20 kilometers away from where we're standing. One Iraqi round exploded in front of a mosque. The great black cloud from the refinery fire ignited by another round started moving north today through a foreboding sky. The Marines were moving too, quickly abandoning an outpost which was getting hit too hard. Iraqi artillery spotters had infiltrated Saudi Arabia, they were convinced, pinpointing their position. Taking control of the area is crucial because this is Highway 1, the quick route north along the coast to Kuwait City. The border crossing, once humming with activity, has been abandoned. Just on the other side, Iraqi troops already fighting to defend a country they call the 19th province of Iraq. They've just been probing so far, skirmishes, brief interruptions of the desert stillness. But one day soon, next week perhaps, maybe tomorrow, this desolate road is destined to become a main battleground in the war which is already raging not very far from here.